part-time YouTuber meetup. This is Ali. Yo, how's it going? I would say, take it easy. Chill out. Enjoy the journey. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. This is fun. Yes. Oh. Oh, these questions are great. Of course. <laughs> oh my god, this is so close to me. No, <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, 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 okay. No, that's true. It's true. We've got two hundred and thirty thousand followers there, and about two hundred and sixty thousand all together across all, all platforms. Keep going, even if it doesn't go somewhere. I think the takeaways can extend beyond just YouTube. So it could be camera confidence. It could be public speaking. Yes. It could be just you know doing a skill that you found initially hard and then having the proof that you've overcome that. And I think I just hit 30,000 subscribers. So not bad, but I think I should be a bit more consistent. Keep staying original and creative and make better content and slow down and make really good content. Stay stoic. Don't let the highs and lows of the market, the audience uh, affect your output. Uh, Part-time YouTuber meetup. This is Ali. Yo, how's it going? Thank you so much again. So I have this podcast called Escape Nine to Five, and then he has picked two questions. Yeah. If you show the number, yeah. number two. two and number four. Okay. Question number two. What's one childhood lesson that you carry with you today? I think the lesson is that you can figure anything out. Everything is a skill. Everything can be learned. Mm -hmm. If you think you're bad at something, you can always improve at the thing. Yeah. And so I was always bad at feeling. I was never confident. It was very bad at public speaking and I learned that I could improve those things yeah, yeah, yeah. now I'm pretty good at those things I reckon yes yeah. uh, question number four what's your coping mechanism and why while going and building your business coping mechanism my coping mechanism is complaining to my team to then help me figure out what's the problem and what we can do about it yeah. so I like having people around me to be like hey Melina or Alison or Aram or Tintin or whoever I'm struggling with this thing should we talk about it and we go for a walk around this park and then we talk about it. It's very nice. Would recommend. Thank you so much. Do you want to have another question from this sure. pile? Yeah. It's very fun. Let's take this one. Question number one. Question number one. What would you do if you have only one year left to live? Everything else stays the same but you know you only have one year left. What would I do? Probably play more video games. <laughs> probably read more books. Okay. Probably go on more walks. Uh, probably host more board games nights with friends, probably play more sports. Yeah. Um, assuming that next time if we still have you on your camera, what would you say to yourself the next time? Ooh. I would say, take it easy. Chill out. Enjoy the journey. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for being on the camera. Thank you, Thank you Ali. Thanks. Thanks. My name's Lisa Tran and my channel name is Lisa Tran. <laughs> And you started 10 years ago? Yeah, so I started YouTube in 2015, um, almost 10 years now. My name is David. You teach Ali? Uh, yeah, so I know Ali, I was teaching him guitar for a while, and my channel and my videos are about music, educational videos about music. I've got Mike here, he's a breath coach. Breath breath coach. coach. He's also been on Ali's channel, so what's your channel name and when did you start it? Um, it's called Take a Deep Breath and we started it in 20. 16. That's a long time ago. Have you seen a significant increment of the number of subscribers after pandemic? Yes. So we uh, doubled in the last couple of years. So you can see on my uh, growth chart, on my analytics, uh, once 2020 happened, um, it just went went crazy. <laughs> skyrocketed. Yeah, it skyrocketed. Yeah. I remember I read the book called Breath during the pandemic as well. I was like, this is so correct. So why does nobody is teaching that at school? My name is Serena and my channel is Dr. Serena Tanaja. This is Abby. Hi, Abby Sharma. Uh, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, it's Abby TV. Luli. Luli and your? Dan. Dan. Uh, like, what's your channel about? So it's quite broad. It's about like psychology, philosophy, technology. Uh, yeah, it's like I'm, I'm a software engineer. Pick, pick two words to describe your channel. Oh, uh, self-development. <laughs> Yours? Uh, yeah, also philosophy and psychology and self-development. 
What is your channel name? Uh, my channel name is uh, Muhammad Zishan ACCA. So it's about uh, text planning for content creators. Karam. What's your channel name? Uh, Karam Zarkito. What is it about? Psychology and I treat it like a diary. Anything I learn, I like to just explain it. Hi, I'm Khalid. I'm a uh, cardiothoracic surgeon. And I've come to PTYA today to try and motivate me to make some videos. This is going to be your first appearance on YouTube. Because this will be our yeah. Yeah. Gia. 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 And Marcella. Hey. How many subscribers do you have? This is my second channel. So I think the first one was around like 70,000. Oh, wow. And then I used to have a tutoring business. So that's okay. what I used to teach. I used to teach high school English on the channel. Okay. And then I sold that business. And now I've got my second channel, which has around 14 and a half subscribers, I think. Um, and that's to help people, like top tutors, start and scale their own businesses. Oh, nice. Yeah, helping them do what I did. Basically. Oh, that's great. I've just passed 50,000 subscribers. Oh, congrats. Thank you. We've got 230,000 followers there and about 260,000 altogether across all, all platforms. But it's mainly people looking to reduce stress, calm down, feel more happy, get better sleep. They come to the channel to learn how to breathe. Oh, that's great. And I think I just hit 30,000 subscribers. So not bad, but I think I should be a bit more consistent. 18, 1850 around that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, 1,500? About 310 or something like that. So I started a little over a year ago and uh, yeah, slow progress, but I'm, I'm happy. I think I've noticed at least a jump in quality from where I started to where I am. 66 subscribers. 28. How many subscribers now you have? Uh, yeah, don't ask me that question because I've been working on my coaching business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. We have different priorities. Are yours? It's 1,000 and something. Something. Yeah. yeah. But you, you have other priorities in life. Priority. Why did you start the channel at the beginning? Um, I think I just saw that there weren't that many tutoring businesses in the YouTube space. Um, so I just knew that there was a market for it and I wanted to like be a first mover essentially. That's great. It's like spotting a business opportunity. Yeah, it, it did really well for the business actually. Yeah. yeah. I started in when COVID happened in 2020. I was doing music and teaching music before and then when COVID happened everything locked down so I thought I'll do some lessons on YouTube. Came across Ali and he was sort of you know growing an educational business so I wanted to get more involved with that and along the way just really fell in love with making videos. Yeah. And so you do your video editing yourself? I do. I, I do everything. Still? But, but I want to. I really I really Aww. like it. I think it's creative to do that. Um, so I was very stressed and anxious yeah. and um, had a lot of panic issues. Mm -hmm. And then I learned some breathing techniques in Poland with a guy called Wim Hof. Oh, yeah, uh, a very famous guy. And he's crazy and lovely. And I started doing his breathing techniques. And I just started to feel different. Uh -huh. I started to calm down, started to sleep better, started to feel happy. And I was like, whoa, what's going on here? And yeah. I just realized that by changing my lungs, Yes. I changed everything else about me. Yeah, because the, the way that you breathe in and breathe out change, I don't remember the, the terms, but basically your nerve system and the CO2 in your in your body, that kind of thing. Uh, that's, that's spot on. So your brain's always listening to your lungs. Yeah. And so if you breathe really fast and shallow, the brain's scared. The, brain, the brain's in fight or flight mode. Yeah, yeah. If you breathe slow, relaxed, exhale, use the nose, the brain goes, okay, we're safe. And we calm down. The nervous system calms down. You sleep better. You feel happier. You feel more relaxed. And so we just change the breath and we change how we feel. Because I'm Chinese, breath in Chinese is called qi. And then we always have that, like, it's like an ancient knowledge and wisdom kind of thing. I basically started documenting things throughout the pandemic. Uh, classic, <laughs> classic. And then my career sort of took me to Australia. So I started documenting all of that, okay. which I think people found quite helpful. Yeah. So that's where I kind of found my rhythm. Now I'm back in the UK practicing here. So trying to find a kind of space for myself on YouTube. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've been doing YouTube on and off for four years. Okay. So to be honest, it, uh, the total subscribers should be more, but... I've never really dedicated um, all my time to it. But look, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm at the PTYA. I used to be someone who thought about the niche and so much and like, oh, I need to know what it is right now. Yeah. But through doing PTYA, I learned that you, you shouldn't really care about the niche until you've 
put enough content out there yeah. and it, it, it will emerge eventually so yeah. uh, what's your, your channel about now so at the moment it's about business wealth and success oh wow um, but like like, oh, like I touched far. it's very broad isn't <laughs> yeah. it yeah so I would love to niche down huh. I think that will come in time as I make more videos imagine you have a channel already what is it gonna be about amazing so I have some ideas that I want to get out there that people don't know about one is um, cardiothoracic surgery getting into such a niche subspeciality doing well in that speciality so uh, I want to help people who want to know more about cardiothoracic surgery and I also have ADHD and I think it's been quite difficult as a doctor of ADHD to even talk about a lot of stigma attached to that a lot of pseudoscience uh, surrounding that as well um, so I want to make content which will cut through uh, yeah and basically give more evidence based knowledge uh, about that basically I'm very curious because people who have ADHD have trouble focus right yes. and you're a doctor yes. how do you deal with it that's very interesting so often people think that oh you're lazy or stupid or this that, but it's trouble focusing on things that you find boring so people with ADHD will not have a problem staying on a computer game for 10 hours you know so <laughs> it's uh, it's things that they find boring so but I enjoy surgery so even within surgery there is certain aspects which might be uh, boring like the beginning and interesting parts of the operation we're good at but maybe the end of the operation but then I know that and I know about tips and tricks and strategies to counter that so we can talk about that yeah yeah, yeah. you should start the video I will send this clip to you yes and then you you can start your channel today what's the name is gonna be um, well what about evidence based evidence based ADHD but also uh, no, the name of the channel uh, cardiothoracic reg on call so have you got the I'm, name I'm yet that name okay but this I will feel be like, your first video I feel like I need a few names but yeah yeah that, that'll be my name 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 doesn't matter the matter is you start today so let's imagine you start this today in a year's time what are you going to tell your future self about your YouTube well done for starting and you should have done it earlier yes. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to commit to something and I really like learning and I started messing up with a blog for a bit and then I've realized that uh, although I like writing I like talking to people and I like explaining myself and I wanted to give it a go with video one sentence to your future self in a year's time about this YouTube thing what would you say I just hope you just keep staying original and creative and which you will so I just moved to London literally a week ago I'm from uh, Australia oh uh, thank you even though I also uh, I'm not from London Where are you from? I moved from Hong Kong uh, like two years ago oh you have to tell me more about you yeah, yeah of course of course yeah. we, will, we will okay uh, yeah. once this is done yeah. once this is done <laughs> I think in a year's time, I'd like to hope that I am experimenting a lot with my YouTube. Um, I've got a lot of help now in my team and I've like hired out like video editors and all of that. So I'm kind of hoping that I can take my creativity to a new level and I hope that in a year's time, I can look back at this video and be like, oh yeah! That's where she used to be. Yeah. Take the creativity to the next level. Well, make more content, <laughs> make better content, yeah. and slow down and make really good content. So I would just, sometimes I will make content really fast, mm -hmm. and I'm, oh, I just need to get it out there. And I think, oh, I wish I'd really thought about the thumbnail. I wish I'd really thought about the style of the content a little more. And then what will happen is I'll either rush the content or I'll make no content. Oh, okay. And so what I'm trying to do now, I've just hired a video editor, and we're going to make regular, consistent, good content yes. and take our time. Yeah, yeah, and we'll yeah. see what happens to the channel now yeah it's like the rhythm of breath that's very good that's yeah very good. Well, so i just have to prioritize sleep and breathing okay. yeah. keep enjoying it and you won't go wrong oh that's so nice <laughs> Stay stoic. Don't let the highs and lows of the market, the audience, uh, affect your output. Uh, good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> How about you? Well, I think just keep going. Even if it doesn't go somewhere, I think the takeaways can extend beyond just YouTube. So it could be camera confidence. It could be public speaking. Yes. It could be just, you know, doing a skill that you found initially hard and then having the proof that you've overcome that, which you can then use in future endeavors. So yeah. focus on on one niche focus on your expertise and then yeah. whatever you want to do 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 the best you want to do society thanks thank you thank hope you. you keep going the youtube journey <laughs> the most unexpected thing that happened to you after you start your youtube channel the most unexpected thing i think just how my business grew significantly as a result significantly. yeah yeah next every year yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like 10x every 
three houses. <laughs> no, not that crazy, but um, like a lot of people who signed up to tutoring with my business signed up because they'd watched my YouTube channel. So I think we had like SEO, we had a Google presence, but it was the YouTube that converted them because they liked they liked the personality, they liked yeah. the brand, like and the you being you. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very different when they can see you in the flesh rather than somebody is just like on paper. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And in a lot of tutoring businesses, it's all like it's all kind of like faceless. Yeah. So people can't really tell uh -huh. like what they're buying into. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I've got to travel a lot and meet. I've, I've met some Qigong masters. Yeah. So I interviewed a Qigong master this year. Uh -huh. um, and I met one last year. These are fantastic people that use the qi to move the energy through their body, and they're doing all these different breathing techniques with their hands and their touch in the earth that's been very interesting yeah nice. yeah i like the chip. where did you meet them um so it's all the podcast is on zoom it's on the internet oh, okay so i'm just emailing different people yeah. but sometimes i get to go so here's a funny one i got to go to greece two years ago and i got to spend time with a man that held his breath for 10 minutes in a single breath of air so he went oh and he held his breath for 10 minutes he set a world record and I got to spend a week with him and he taught me some of his techniques now I can't do 10 minutes but I can do 3 minutes now I can't, I can't do 10 uh, but he taught me his techniques how to go deep under the water with no oxygen yeah, yeah, yeah. hold your breath for several minutes so we did the free diving that was that was amazing oh uh, yeah that, I, I cannot that, I don't think <laughs> I think it takes some practice yeah. it's going to sound very big headed but this happened to be more in Australia than it did in the UK because I think I was a lot more niche there uh -huh. but people recognising you you yeah, at yeah. work like yeah. patients patients relatives um, staff that that was very surprising and it never got old it always felt so weird but very exciting how often yeah. maybe I think at its most maybe like once a week but it was really nice because it starts conversations that you wouldn't otherwise have yeah because people want to come and say hi yeah. which they wouldn't otherwise and so then you start a conversation it's lovely it's just the connection when you go to people and then you say you've got a YouTube channel, people, uh, they, they peak in curiosity very quickly. You just see their eyes like, oh, really, that's really cool. And I've had a lot of people from work who I've shared it with. They said, oh, you know, fair play for putting yourself out there and stuff like that. So it's surprising. I think the reaction that I've got from work, you'd think that, you know, people would look kind of uh, dubious about a YouTube channel, but everyone's been very encouraging. So Yeah, that's what ha has happened to me too. And how about yourself? Um, I got a lot of subscribers very quickly just from a few videos and I I wasn't I wasn't really expecting That's that. Great. Yeah. I have my subscriber um, probably just like one every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's going nowhere. Which is your favorite video on your YouTube? My favorite. It's so weird, you know. Like the one that the one that sticks out. I love all my videos, yes. and I think my I think my videos are Otherwise great. You wouldn't pull on yeah, exactly. Yeah. But my favorite one was titled Five Things to Ditch If You Want to Be Rich," and it was my most viewed video. I only released it like last month. Yeah, um, and how many views? Got like. 2.2k oh views which was for long form like it yeah, was yeah. for me that was good knowing what you know now what would you change when you first start your channel i i think the importance of telling stories in whatever you do uh, it doesn't have to be a, a typical like once upon a time this happened even if you're doing educational or lifestyle i think that you can tell a story and not only does it really help with retention but it just really engages the viewer to fall in with what you're doing so tell stories yeah. now you started your second channel it must be very different your strategy oh yeah it's definitely very different yeah i think learning like learning as much as you can in regards to marketing um, i think when i first started my youtube channel i just sort of did what i wanted to and didn't really have like a goal for it um, i guess this is more for anybody who actually wants to have a business alongside their youtube channel yes, like yes. something that they're like selling products or selling services for as opposed to just a YouTube channel because that's that's what I do it's a better way actually because you don't need to have a million subscribers yeah 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 exactly I think personally I like it more because you have more control over I think you have more control yeah, yeah. over yeah, yeah, yeah. you know just moving people through the funnel but I didn't know anything about funnels and like all of that Full crap cycle, yeah. yeah so now it's a lot more intentional I would say okay okay yeah. I treated 
it like a hobby for a very long time because I wanted it to stay fun. And I think if you treat it too much like a business, it becomes unfun very quickly. Yes. But I think I realize, I think I, I wish I realized quicker you could get a balance of both. Try to keep away from the sort of business side of it. But that makes it a lot more fun as well when you start to kind of take it a bit more seriously. And I think that makes a better commitment to yourself when you start taking it seriously that you want to be more consistent. So I wish I'd realized that earlier. Although I still love it as a hobby and I still think it's so much fun. Yeah. I think there's a good balance in the middle, which I wish I'd realized the potential of earlier. You need to be in the camera. A few ideas. You come into the, uh -huh. the, the frame. So basically, I'll do 10 minutes. I can do three minutes now. I can't, I can't do 10. <laughs> good job. Yes? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Thanks. Thanks.